Okay, so we want to find a power series for natural log of x, and we want it to be centered at 1. So here's what we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is we're going to start working with f of x. Now, f of x is natural log of x, and the key is that f prime of x is 1 over x. And now, 1 over x, right, which is our f prime of x, is the same thing as 1 over x minus 1. Because remember, since I want a power series that's centered at 1, I'm looking for a power series with this general format. Right? So this is the general format I'm looking for. And so when I see this 1 over x, I'm thinking about how can I get that to look like smiley face to the n equals 1 over 1 minus smiley face, right? So then 1 over 1 minus smiley face, I can write that as a geometric series. And this is good for if smiley face is in between 1 and negative 1. So I need my smiley face to have x minus 1. I need my smiley face to involve x minus 1. But I can't just write 1 over x is equal to x minus 1 because that's not true. Right? 1 over x isn't equal to x minus 1, but it is equal to 1 plus x minus 1. Okay, and so now I can see more clearly that my smiley face is going to actually be negative x minus 1. Okay, so this is going to be equal to the sum, so it starts at 0 to infinity. So my smiley face is negative x minus 1. So it's all of that to the nth power. And this is valid for negative x minus 1, because that's my smiley face, in between 1 and negative 1. OK, and so let's just kind of simplify some of this notation here. So this negative. Can you tell that this is the same as negative 1 times x minus 1 to the n? So I can bring out that negative 1. So I'm going to have negative 1 to the n times x minus 1 to the n. This is my power series centered at centered at 1. OK, and now when is it valid? It is valid when, let me go over here to the side. So it's valid when, I'm going to use a smaller tip here. Okay, so it's valid when so it is valid for negative 1 less than negative x minus 1 less than 1. So I'm going to take that and split it into negative 1 is less than negative x minus 1 and negative x minus 1 is less than 1. So I can divide by negative 1. So 1 is greater than x minus 1. So x is less than 2. Then over here, if I divide both sides of the inequality by negative 1, I'll have x minus 1 is greater than negative 1. Now I add 1 to both sides, so x is greater than 0. So then putting it together, I want my interval of convergence to be all of the points where x is greater than 0 and less than 2. So we need x to be greater than 0 and less than 2. So I've got my power series. My power series is valid for x greater than 0 and less than 2. Am I done? No. Why? Because this is for 1 over x. And I'm not supposed to find the power series for 1 over x. I'm supposed to find the power series for natural log of x, right? And so what's the connection between natural log of x and 1 over x? Well, natural log of x is the integral of 1 over x, dx, right? Natural log of x is the antiderivative of 1 over x. So I am now going it's to integrate. Thank you. I'm going to integrate my power series. So my power series here is starts n equals 0, negative 1 to the n, 
I've got x minus 1 to the n dx, right? So what did I do? 1 over x, right? 1 over x is equal to this power series. So if I want to integrate 1 over x, that's the same thing as integrating this power series. Now I'm going to do it term by term, which means this is the same as, so here's what I can do. I can switch my integral and my sum sign. So this is the sum from 0 to infinity of the integral of negative 1 to the n, x minus 1 to the n, dx. And now, do you see how, so just looking at this integral, right? So ignore the, sum, the summation. Negative 1 to the n has nothing to do, negative 1 to the n has nothing to do with x. So when I integrate, I can, I can pull out that constant, negative 1 to the n. I've actually got the integral of x minus 1 to the n dx. What is that integral? It is x minus 1 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1. And then I've got plus a constant. Okay, so actually, this is what we mean by term by term integration. And so remember that our interval of, so this is valid on 0 to 2. And so all of these integrating does not change your radius of convergence, right? And it does not change your center. So our answer is valid on 0 comma 2. Okay. So now what I want to do now is I want to go back and I want to show you kind of exactly what we are doing. And this time I would like to write it out, not in sigma notation, but do these computations using, um, using the long, right, the long way. Okay, so now what is the sum from 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n, x minus 1 to the n? So when n equals 0, I'll just have 1. And then when n is equal to 1, I'll have minus x minus 1 plus x minus 1 squared minus x minus 1 cubed plus x minus, there's a mistake there, sorry, plus x minus 1 to the fourth minus plus dot dot dot. So it's all of this dx. Okay. Now when I'm integrating that, that's the same thing as if I, so that is the same as if I integrate 1 dx minus the integral of x minus 1 dx plus the integral of x minus 1 squared dx minus the integral of x minus 1 cubed dx, and so forth and so on, right? Plus minus dot dot dot. But what is this? This is the sum of the integral, actually negative 1 to the n, starting at 0 to infinity, x minus 1 to the n dx. So what have I done? This is an integral minus this integral plus this integral minus this integral, right? So that's how I'm able to write it as an infinite sum. So, and now from here, most people are comfortable with saying what's the integral of one? Well, it's gonna be x plus a constant. What's the integral of x minus one? It'll be x minus one squared over two. Okay, what's the integral of x minus 1 squared? x minus 1 cubed over 3, right? And then minus x minus 1 to the fourth over 4 plus minus dot, dot, dot. And so the deal is now the last thing you would do is to write this as a power, as a, uh, in, using sigma notation, you would end up with what we have right here. Okay, so... If you need to write out all of the, if you need to write out the terms and integrate, right, like if, if you don't like using sigma notation, that's fine for you to convert it from sigma notation to, um, you know, to using dots and then integrate 
and then you know put it back in terms of sigma notation so your final answer should always be in terms of sigma notation when we are when we're doing these um, when we're doing these uh, types of examples okay so if it's okay to leave it in this format if it's okay to leave it you know like if it's okay to leave it like this then I'll be very clear and I'll say hey you do not need to have your solution written in sigma notation otherwise you should be written in sigma notation like this